Welcome to Can I Park Here? Brought to you by findafashiontruck.com. Nashe and Estrell's mission is to inspire future and existing small business owners. They don't claim to be experts. They're simply trying to figure this all out, just like you. Welcome to another episode of the Can I Park Here podcast, brought to you by findafashiontruck.com. My name is Nashe Snow, and I'm here with Estrell Riles. Today, we talked to Melissa, the owner of Suburban Girl Gifts in Cypress, Texas. Let me just say, this woman is awesome. She has a brick and mortar business, a mobile boutique. She even has an app to go with her business. And I think that's just awesome. Like, everybody... You guys got to step your game up because this woman is rocking the game right now, okay? What I love about her is like her drive. You'll hear a little bit in the episode, but really when, if you're a person that just likes to do stuff and be creative and be busy, like it's amazing what you can do. And I think she is an example of what you can do if you are determined and you don't give up and, you know, you do what's necessary in order to make some thing like kind of, you know, come alive. So yeah, she's really good. She's awesome. And then even in addition to the brick and mortar and the mobile boutique, and she's spending so many hours with both of those businesses, she also has a jewelry business. So she finds time to make jewelry and spend time with her family and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, I mean, you're going to love the episode. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go to the episode, also remember that all of our episodes and a lot more are on YouTube. So go over to YouTube and subscribe to us to listen to this episode, to past episodes, to our special videos. Um, And remember, we always have helpful tips not only on YouTube, but also on startafashiontruck.com. But anywho, let's get to uh, Melissa because she is awesome. Here Here we we go. go. Hello, Melissa. Thanks for joining us on the Can I Park Here podcast. We really appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Um, So can you tell us a little bit kind of about your background, like kind of maybe, uh, you know, before you started the business, like what did you do? And then um, what made you then decide to open the mobile boutique? Long story short, I... uh, Went to college for fashion design and merchandising and ended up changing my major in between there to interior design. So for the last 20 years, I've been an interior designer working for home builders. And I did a lot of travel and I was in San Diego one one travel visit and saw this little store called Urban Girl. And it flooded me with ideas of man, I want to do that. And at the time, my industry wasn't doing well. Uh, We were, people were getting laid off left and right. Um, And so I needed plan B and plan B was to do a store. And so Suburban Girl was born because I live in suburbia. And um, (laughs) and so um, I thought, you know, Suburban Girl. And so I ended up quitting my corporate job that I had for a long time, and I opened up a storefront called Suburban Girl, and it evolved into a mobile boutique from there. So we have both right now. We have a storefront and a mobile boutique right now. How long uh, has the the store been open, the brick-and-mortar store? This brick-and-mortar store is, uh, we just made five years on the brick-and-mortar. Yes. That's awesome. Yes, yes. We've survived. And then at what point, I know, right? Yeah, because it's kind of like you made yeah. the mark, right? Yeah. Like you passed we, we, that little. We made that mark, so we're happy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what type of stuff do you sell in the store? And is it the same as what's on the truck? It's the same as what's on the truck. It's it's a mini version of the store is what the truck is. Okay. And then at what point did you decide to open up the mobile boutique? Like how long have you had that open? The mobile boutique, we're on our third year on that. And um, it was a new concept here. Uh, I'm in Texas and I am constantly following what LA does and, you know, your big metropolitan cities. And um, it was 
you know, the food truck industry was there and there were a few fashion trucks out there three years ago and there was nothing like that here. And I thought, you know, we have so much competition with, you know, our, our, our um, brick and mortar that you have to be different. You have to stand out. You have to be different. And, you know, I thought I'll get me a mobile boutique and it was going to be an extension of the store, kind of a, you know, a marketing where I can just go out. And I thought, you know, if I can't get them in the store, I'm going to come to them. And um, it was an extension of the store. And it started out being where it was more marketing than anything else. I really didn't imagine that it would be such a profit maker for me at the time. Hmm. Now, you know, I love hearing the stories of how the mobile boutique owners came to find their truck. So how did you end up with the the vehicle that you have now? Okay, so, um, you know, when I was looking up L.A. and things like that, no one had a bus, um, which I have a bus. Everyone had like your UPS truck, your Charlie Chip truck or whatever. And I searched and searched for one of those puppies here and could not find one at all. <laughs> and I mean, they're difficult to find when you're looking for one. And if it if I did find it, it was not in the state of Texas. So it was very difficult. So one day I'm driving literally, you guys, three miles from my store driving. And I see this used bus lot and there was a little bus um, sitting on the in the bus lot with all these huge buses. And I just looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get a bus. And so I pulled in, I pulled in, I'm like, hello, hello. Um, I want to buy this bus. And they thought I was crazy. And my husband thought I was crazy. Everyone thought I was crazy. And, um, and so that's, that's how I found it literally by chance, three miles away. And literally I had looked for months for something. Cool. Oh. Yeah. Now, how much work did you have to put into it? And do you mind sharing like the amount of money that went into the renovations and the purchase? So what we had to put into it, um, it it's a 2001, uh, but it did come from New York and New York, you know, has a lot of snow out there. So it was rusted a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the bus, I believe I paid like eighty five hundred dollars for the bus as is. Okay. So we had to paint it. Obviously, we had to gut it. We put in wood floors. We added shelving, jewelry displays, all that, an air conditioner, um, everything. I think all in, we're right about 20000 all in okay. with, with that. And, you know, that's with me and my husband doing most of the work. We did almost everything ourselves except the electrical, which we had to hire someone to do that. And I'm curious, with the windows, how did you install the shelving? Okay, so you guys know my degree is in interior design. Mm -hmm. That helps me a lot. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, uh, no, I just designed it to where, you know, she worked for me. I mean, I... Um, she as in the bus as a she. And, um, you know, I just... uh, I. I used the windows to my advantage. We did um, basically shelving where the windows were open. So all my jewelry displays are there. So when the light shines through, it really helps, you know, focus on the jewelry. And the back window, I have one long rack. We installed our closer in the back window. And then the side windows, I have like a console. And then uh, I made jewelry displays where there, I found old frames that were in my house for years and the pictures were hideous. And I took all the pictures out, took the glass out and I kept the frame and I painted it, distressed the frame and then added like a, a burlap cork board in it to hold all my jewelry. And so I put those up against the window. And so it, it works. Um, and it's every square inch of that bus is utilized. Wow. We, we, even, we even have a little dressing room in there. So, and really, and this, Yes, we do. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, people didn't know what I was doing. I would have the bus at parked in my driveway and at my home, and you know, it was painted turquoise, and there was nothing else on it at the time. We didn't get it wrapped yet or anything. And people would pass by, and they're like, um, "What's the bus for?" Like they thought it was a food truck. I mean, they were just shocked when I was like, "Oh no, it's a." mini boutique in here and they're like what we what? never heard <laughs> yeah so it's pretty cool 
Now, uh, and let me know if you've done this, but I assume like with the two businesses that you, uh, you know, have people that you've hired to like, um, kind of work the register, like at what point did you say, you know what, uh, it's time for me to hire help? Okay. So the, for the brick and mortar, any, any store, I mean, any kind of retail store you're going to have, it takes a year to two years to get off the ground. It really does. So for the first year of the brick and mortar, it was me. And I worked, I thought my corporate job was hard until I got this, this gig. Mm -hmm. Um, now it's, it's a different kind of hard work. You're working for yourself and you know, it's, you know, you want to succeed and you want to do it. But I mean, I worked probably 60 hours a week the first year by myself. And then honestly, when that first year came up and I saw how much money I made, I wanted to throw in the towel. And I'm like, I am busting my hiney, you know, for this. But I mean, my advice to everyone is don't stop. If you're not losing money, do it. It takes a while to get established. And by the probably by the 15th month, I was able to hire someone and she is with me still today. And um, yes. And so she's like my manager. And then, of course, I have part time people now. So um, but, you know, you, you have to love what you do and do it every day. And, and I do. So it was worth it. Totally worth it. When you first opened the store, how, where did you source your products from and how much did you put into stocking the store? Like, did you only buy a little bit just to see how everything was going to go or did you just buy a whole bunch of in- inventory? I've worked in retail before, but never had owned something. So didn't know how much inventory I would need. Didn't know anything. I thought $20,000 was a lot. Okay. And so that's what I based my budget on when we opened the store. Uh, for inventory. Didn't we, our, our store is a thousand square feet of showroom space. I mean, it's 1600 total, 600 is storage, but a thousand of it is square feet and $20,000 did not fill it up. And Mm. so when we first opened, um, and that's all I could afford. I mean, I basically took my savings and, and bought what I could. And so when people came in, I did get comments like, oh, the store is kind of empty, you know, and, you know, it's just, you well, it's the best I can do. Um, but I've learned that people buy from people they like. So it didn't matter that the store was half empty. They liked me as a person and they came back, which I'm very grateful for. And they're still coming back today. And I just reinvested. So if I would sell $20, I'd reinvest $20. And I did that for a year. And now our store is full. I mean, it's very full, the store. (laughs) And um, I mean, it's a learning experience. I had never done it before. And it's, you know, you live and you learn. You you don't learn anything unless you fail at something and you get up and you try again. And so it was, I was just happy that those customers decided to come back and give me another chance, you know, knowing that there was a slim amount to choose from. And, and I do have a huge array of loyal customers and new customers that come in. I, I probably, I would say 10 a week that come in that are new. Advice for people, just I, I wish I can write a book on how to open up a boutique on a budget because, honey, that is what I did. Hey, That's- look, you could. <laughs> I, There's tons I, of people I, self-publishing I, now. <laughs> yeah, I found every penny out of the sofa, whatever, to open up that store. And, um, you know, it, it worked. So I would say go for it. If it's your dream, you have to do it. And I think for the listeners out there, kind of another key thing that you said is like, you use your savings. So you actually saved, you know, money before you did this, you know, like even if it kind of cleared out the savings, like you at least like had like a, just a little something you could pull from in order to pull it off. So, you know, I would definitely encourage the listeners out there. Like if this is like your dream, like you know, live, I always tell people like live poor, you know what I'm saying? Like save every penny you can. Yes, it's true. It, it's very true. And I wish I would have known that 20 years ago. Um, you know, so I mean, it would be so much easier. But yes, you live poor, you live beyond below your means. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've always told I have a 17 year old daughter who's graduating. And I always told her, you know, 
go to college for a job you're going to love because it doesn't matter if you make $20,000 a year, $30,000 a year, or $100,000 a year. Money's not everything. It's it's going to work, enjoying yourself, and you learn to live within that budget. And that's, what, you know, I quit a big corporate job to do this, and I am so much more happier now. Uh, although my income is lower than what it was, I'm, I'm in control of my destiny. And mm-hmm. I've learned to live within within those means. And, and it's wonderful. Wonderful. Right. Oh, yeah, that's I, amazing. Yeah. I'm yeah. just, I'm, I'm over here like dreaming about myself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh my gosh, she is so right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it takes like a lot of guts, right? Because if you have like a high paying job, yeah, You know, to be, to kind of take that leap and just be like, okay, you know, this is something that I feel like I can do. And then I'll say for the listeners out there, like, and I, I know we've talked about this in other episodes, like you have to figure out what's right for you. Like for some people, they're like, okay, you know what? I've got a little nest egg set up. I've got a great business plan. I know that, you know, I'll be able to sustain myself and I can quit my job and make it. But if you don't feel like you're there, then you can still keep you know, your full-time job and working now is 80 hour weeks, but it's worth it knowing that you're working towards, you know what, exactly. Start off small. I mean, you know, if, if your dream is to open up, you know, a mobile boutique, um, then, you know, do trade shows first before, you know, do trade shows where all you got to rent is a table. You have a table and a tablecloth and you put your products out and you go sell it and you build up that money and you keep reinvesting, reinvesting. And within a year, I guarantee you, you'll have enough money to put down on, on a truck or something. You you start small, you keep your job and you start small. That's how you do it. You have to be determined to do it. And if you're determined, you will do it. You will make it. Now, tell us a little bit, uh, the listeners, a little bit about kind of the type of clothing that you sell, like the style of clothing and kind of um, why you chose to kind of, you know, go with that particular style. Okay, so my store Suburban Girl and, you know, there's all kinds of people that live in suburbia. You have your country people, your hippie people, your classic people. And when I opened up Suburban Girl, I thought this is everybody's girl. I mean, (laughs) we, you know, we're, you know it's, we dress like everyone else. And, um, me personally, I am a huge hippie. Um, (laughs) like right now I have huge bell bottoms on and my hair's in a bun. And, you know, I grew up in the seventies and I'm total hippie. I love it. Um, so of course that style is going to be in the store because that's me. So I have that. And then I have, um, country. We sell tons of cowboy boots, Um, you know, rodeo is huge over here. And, um, so we have tons of outfits for rodeo, but I mean, our girls over here in Cypress, Texas, we wear our cowboy boots all year long. So, uh, we always have outfits to match with that. And then of course you have your, you know, we have our classic style that we sell, which is more like my daughter that, you know, the American Eagle look or, you know, Tommy Hill figure we, we have, we don't sell those brands. Uh, but we have clothes that look like that, mm-hmm. that we sell with your with your traditional puffer vest and your riding boots and, <laughs> you know, your slick ponytail. So we have I mean, we have, we're in suburbia. We have it all. So um, we can cater to anyone with any style. Um, people come in our mobile boutique or our store and is like, oh, help me. I'm going to this event and I need to to dress a certain way. And, you know, we we hook them up. So we have it all. And out of those three different styles, um, what is the best selling one? Okay. Country most popular country chic is the country one, because like I said, the cowboy boots, that country look here. Um, if I, you know, if you're familiar with, um, like maybe free people, that brand, that's kind of the look that sells the most in our area. Now, when I, this is my storefront I'm talking about. Now, when I do my mobile boutique, it depends on what event I'm going to, what I'm going to bring. So I have to do research okay. where I go somewhere because, um, you know, I'm not going to sell a hippie look or a country look when I'm going into a very um, more structured area. 
you know, where they're, they're more, they they have to dress for work more and things like that, where they're not going to wear bell bottoms to work. So, you know, it just depends on where my shows are. So I have learned that where I'm going to appeal to your market. Exactly. And, uh, and then I'll, because we order different inventory for, for the mobile boutique than we do the store. Because, like, my store is always in one location where my bus is not. And so you have to cater to that that person. Now, you, you've been, I think, touched on that a little bit. But how has um, your mobile boutique kind of complemented the storefront? Okay, amazingly. Um, I have gotten so many new customers mm. from the mobile boutique. It's incredible. Um, And we are booked solid almost every weekend for the entire year with this. Wow. Yes. Um, Yes. (laughs) That's a good thing. (laughs) I'm a busy girl. uh, And I mean, we travel all through Texas because Texas is a huge state. So, I mean, you can drive 10 hours and still be in Texas. So I, um, you know, we just, we travel, we do events and I get new customers and you know, it brings them either back to my website or back to the store or, you know, um, to, to sell and buy more merchandise. So it's, it's been a great extension to the store. It was one of the best decisions I ever made, ever made, was to get that mobile boutique. Being a business owner with a brick and mortar and a mobile retail business, what are some of the lessons that you've learned throughout your journey that you, you, you know that will be beneficial to other people about to venture into this, this business? What my advice is, if uh, a storefront is very hard, hard to open, it's, it's got a lot of expenses in it. Um, you have to have employees. I mean, obviously, you can't close your store and then go run your mobile boutique. Um, so you have to have employees to do one or the other. Um, I just think if you're just starting out, start with one or the other. I mean, the mobile boutique is obviously the least expensive way to do it. And you can get your name out there and, and establish your brand and then open up a store. I kind of did it backwards because, like I said, I didn't. I mean, these mobile boutiques didn't exist when I opened up my store, um, especially in, in my area. And, um, and so if I could have done it again, I probably would have done the mobile first because it was, it was less expensive to do the mobile boutique first and then build up to open up that storefront. But I did it opposite. So that's the advice I would give is to do, do it small first. Okay. Now, as far as um, like marketing is concerned, like what do you have any techniques or strategies for people? Because I see like on Facebook, you have like 14,590 people. That's impressive. Yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> That's you. Really impressive. Thank and even you. on IG, you know, you have close to 7,000 followers. So, yeah. how have you been able to like get those followers? Okay, so when Facebook World was amazing before <laughs> it went to a to a uh, <laughs> you know, a company that wanted to actually make money from it, which I don't blame them. Um, That's when I got a lot of my organic reach was Mm. before Facebook started charging. Mm. Um, I probably got about, I would say 10,000 then. And then when, um, which I was fortunate to get that. And then when Facebook changed, um, it's only been probably the last year and a half that it's, Really, if you don't pay for for face for an ad on Facebook, you're not going to get any showings. Just for example, I have, like you said, over fourteen thousand people on Facebook. If I put an ad on Facebook and I do not pay for it, probably ninety five people will see it out of the fourteen thousand. So it's kind of slowed down a little. So I've been trying to build up the Instagram because I was new to Instagram. I mean, I focused all my energy for the last five years on Facebook. And we still, I still do ads every once in a while. And I believe that it's important to do ads because, for instance, on Facebook, I'll do, I'll put a, a shirt on there and then I'll, I'll put an ad out for it. And I will sell out of that shirt within 24 hours doing the ad. Wow. 
Wow. So, yes. So, you know, I, I mean, I just can't do ads all the time. So mm-hmm. you have to pick and choose what you want to do. And so I did do an ad. How I got the Instagram followers is I did an ad on Facebook telling people to follow me on Instagram. So then they that got me a lot of followers on Instagram by doing that. So I, I do think Facebook is important. And I believe that if you are if you are posting stuff on Facebook and you're not paying for it, you're wasting your time. You need to buy ads on Facebook to get your reach. And that's how mm-hmm. I got followers on Instagram um, by doing a Facebook ad to get followers on Instagram. I mean, and plus what I do, too, like here's one of my Instagram things that I do. I tell people if they buy something from me in my mobile boutique um, or my store, I tell them, hey, if you have if you wear this shirt and you you tag me in the picture that you wear in the shirt, I'll give you 10 percent off the next time you come in. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that gets them to follow me on Instagram. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm very big in marketing too. You know, I did a lot of that in my interior design job and it's very important. And, um, you know, and, and email, I do email as well. Oh, so. and you know, I think that's a huge thing right now because it's just like, you know, how you mentioned that Facebook changed, right? Like yeah. Instagram can change, Twitter can change, but mm-hmm. if you grow an email list, that's yours, exactly. you know? <laughs> so I definitely, for all you listeners out there, like no matter what, make sure you're collecting emails, like when you're at shows, when you're in in the store or like wherever you can, because you have complete control over that email list. Yes. And most people, you know, with Facebook, they may have, gosh, hundreds of people they're following and they may not see your ad. Even if you pay for it, they may not see it. And so with, with email, um, they're always going to open up their email. So yeah, I mean, it's where we constantly, we have an email list at the bus. We have an email list at the store and we give them incentives to sign up for email. Um, so, you know, I think it's email and social media, you know, is the cheapest way to market your business. We like for magazines and things like that, we do some marketing with that, but I just find that, you know, social media and email is the one that pays off the most. Mm-hmm. And for the the listeners, please know that if there is a business that a business page that you have liked and you are really interested in that business or it's one of your favorite places or what have you, just know that liking the page isn't enough because like, you know, we've said is there's no guarantee that you will see their posts. Now, what you should do in in addition to liking the page is also request notifications from that page. So every time they post, regardless, you're going to get a notification of anything that they post. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you can also do that on Instagram too, like uh, get notifications on your favorite stores. So highly recommend that. Mm -hmm. And also for even for emails, it's good to like once you sign up for something, add um, their email uh, to your address book too. So then it doesn't accidentally end up in your spam folder. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You know? Man, it's like everything is just so hard. Like it's a trick to like, everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like you do so much work via Snapchat, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, whatever, but you still are trying to do like after you get all these followers, you're still doing twice as much work to get them to even see the content, you know. It, so Exactly. You, know. you worked really, you know, we work really hard to get all these followers and now you have to work double hard just to get them to see it. Right. So <laughs> it is. It it is. I mean, you Every day it's something new. So it's a full-time job, literally, just to deal with social media and, you know, making sure your customers see your arrivals, see your new items and your events you're going to. And, you know, you want them to see it and you want the ones that want to see it, you know, to teach them how they can see it. I have to tell my customers to just get on my on my page. I also have an app. I forgot about Mm. that. Oh, neat. Yeah, we have our own app. And, um, it's, you just search in your iTunes store, uh, or your app store. It's called suburban girl and you can, uh, shop directly from there. And, um, 
there's also a rewards card on there that um, you earn points for purchases. But most importantly, I can send push notifications. So mm-hmm. if I have a special or a new arrival, I'll send a push notification and they get it on their phone. So we I, we do do that as well. Wow, See, everybody, <laughs> you need to step up your game. And get Honey, your I, I'm telling you, you have to be different. And so, yes. And pe- it's funny, too, because when, you know, they come into the bus and I'm like, oh, download our, our app. They're like, oh, my God, you know, this is amazing. And I said, well, you know, we are amazing, I have to say. <laughs> no. You are amazing. <laughs> And then I know we definitely have to ask this question because this, I feel like, comes up a lot in our Facebook group. So since you have a brick and mortar and um, a mobile boutique, how do you keep track of the inventory? Is your point of sale system the same for both? So if you sell something out the truck, like, you know, I guess everything is kind of accounted for or is the inventory so completely different that you don't worry about it and you use two different systems for both boutiques. Okay. So what we use is Square, which is amazing. I mean, I would recommend it to anyone. And basically at the store, we hand wrote tickets. We didn't have a POS system was very expensive for us, like $4,000. And Mm. we, you know, it's just a lot of money for small business. And um, when I got the mobile boutique three years ago, I needed something mobile to take with me. And so we did the square mobile and I loved it so much. I just converted my whole store to it about a year ago. And, uh, what you can do in the square is you can have different stores in different locations and you can set them on the square. So I know exactly what my mobile does and exactly what my store does separately. And, uh, so it's, I mean, this square is amazing. I mean, you can send customer Customers personalized emails with coupons. Um, you can send them messages. You can keep track of, you know, what a uh, customer is visiting more often, which ones aren't. So you can tell them to come back in. It is an amazing system. And literally, you guys, I think the investment was about $300. Mm. Now, does it integrate with your online store as well? No, it doesn't. Now, I could do that, but I, I just... Haven't had the time to integrate it yet. Um, My online store, uh, we do PayPal with that one, with the online store. Mm -hmm. But I could integrate it with Square. I just haven't had time to do that. We're we're, uh, revamping my internet right now as we speak. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So we're making it more user-friendly. We're changing the theme to it. um, Where it's much, much easier to shop. It was... Um, before it was very busy, I guess you would say. Um, so we're making it more streamlined, uh, so it's easier to shop. And when, when all of that is said and done, I'll probably look into integrating it to the square. Um, but that's probably not going to be for several months now. So, okay. no, Hey, it's all in the plan. You've got a lot going on. Great things going on. Yeah. <laughs> I like the app. I don't even know how people can compete with that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the well, app's pretty cool. We're proud of it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And that's another great way to collect email lists. And like, like you yes. even said, like being able to send people notifications is amazing. So they're always connected. Always connected. Know? Yes. I'm curious, what, how do you collaborate with other local businesses? Okay, so we collaborate with local businesses a lot. I mean, over here in um, in Texas, you know, we have a fashion truck society. And so um, it's about six of us, and we always do events together. Um, we basically, one person manages it, and if there's a, like a, a bar or a festival or somebody that wants us to do something like every weekend where we, we get put in a rotation list and then we rotate because like whole foods, we do whole foods and we rotate every weekend with two trucks there. And, um, and it works out and we, we are all friends. Um, you know, we, we gain knowledge from each other, information from each other. It's, it's fantastic. And I mean, and, like some of us are in competition with each other, but we try not to have the same exact like 
you know, if there's another clothing fashion truck, we try not to have the same thing at the same event that we're going to. Um, we really work well together. It's a, I mean, we call us, we're all sisters, um, is what we call us, you know. So there are no parking wars. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and and it, it's just, it's, it's just a little, you know, it, it's a society and, and we, we love it. And also if like for the store, how I collaborate, we have a, a massage place, um, across the street from us that does massages and, you know, most of us are all small businesses, you know, just we're out there, you know, just making a living. And, um, there's times that she will come in and have a masseuse there to give free neck massages. If you spend $25 in my store, you know, and we give coupons out. I mean, it's, it's so easy to, to help each other and to promote each other's businesses. I go to wine bars all the time with my mobile boutique and it helps their business and it helps my business. So I would, very much recommend collaborating with other businesses, um, you know, that you're close to. Even my app has a thing where you can, I can download like where to get the best coffee from, you know, in my area. If you're coming to Suburban Girl, where can you go get the best coffee later? You know, so it's, <laughs> it's you know, it's just, it, it, you know, it's it's a world of knowledge and and we're here to help each other and um, and share ideas on what works for them and what works for me. So I love doing that. Well, we just have a, a couple of uh, wrap up questions just to help the listeners get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite blog, book, or TV show? And if so, what is it? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm reading right now, uh, I read a lot of business books. Um, oh my gosh. So like when my friends are reading about Harry Potter or whatever, <laughs> Melissa reading business books and, uh, I'm reading, um, the challenges of SEO search engine optimization right now. Doesn't sound very, <laughs> very fun, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's me. And, um, and I, I read tons of that. I read marketing books and how to fix my website and, um, and things like that. Now, my favorite two, I am addicted to the housewives. I have to, I have to admit it. Okay. Like I record it. My husband cannot stand it. He's like, not this again, but you know, I'm, I'm not home very often. So like, I have like maybe 10 of them all saved up and I watch, I'll have like a marathon day and I watch all my housewives. I'm totally addicted to reality TV. Um, and I, um, in my spare time, I love making jewelry. Um, Ooh. I go to jewelry shows. I, I love doing it. Um, we do sell some of it in my store and I do have a partner, uh, with my jewelry company and, um, and I love doing that. It's the creative part that comes out of me from design and, uh, I love designing jewelry. So I do that as well. Oh, wow. You're just like into everything. That's how do you have time for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, ask I, that question to say. I know, I, I know. It's like the pot calling the kettle black, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know how it is. When you you're a working woman, you are a working woman. You know that, that is we, true. you know, you we find women are multitaskers, I believe, and I just feel like you know when we want something, we go out and get it, that's and true. and totally you know it, that that's just that's how we're wired, and I love it. I love it. You know, it's like if you have that passion and that desire, you will find time. You will. You will. And you know what? It it, it, it makes it makes you happy. So yeah. you do things that make you happy. Why would you do things that didn't? You know, so it you know, it's it's just happiness. No, yeah, completely agree. Mm -hmm. If you could have any celebrity, entertainer, model, athlete visit your mobile boutique, who would it be? Oh my God, y'all are going to die. Okay. <laughs> I am obsessed with Harry Connick Jr. Really? Yes. <laughs> From the moment he played in Hope Floats, I wanted to marry that man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, yes. And yeah, so if he visited my mobile boutique, I think it would pass out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> You never know. He could be listening or someone he knows could be listening. If well, you know, I think he lives in Texas. So come see me, Harry. <laughs> see? Come see. There you go. Okay. You, you know what, even... Michelle? You're full of it. How are you going to encourage her 
But when I told you about who I wanted to marry, you shot me down and told me I didn't have a, cho- okay, a chance. I'm sorry. So Timberlake, just, Justin Timberlake. Just so you know, I want to marry Justin Timberlake. Okay, <laughs> Jessica, go, go get you a life because <laughs> that the man one. is yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that's funny what do you like to do in your free time to just wind down wind down and de-stress um well I love spending time with my family my daughter like I said is 17 she's a senior this year so she's leaving for college I'll, I'll be an empty nester she's my only child I'll be an empty nester when she leaves so oh. every spare moment I have <laughs> right now is with her and my husband. Now my husband's not leaving, of course. You know he's staying, but um, yeah. And he works with me on the mobile boutique all the time, so he's he's oh, a great cool. supporter of of you know our business, and I just love him. Um, but yeah, so just spending time with family, you know, because it. I mean, time just flies, and I just can't believe that my daughter is going to go to college next year. You know, so I'm just I'm holding on to every moment with her. So, so that's what, where my time is spent right now. Every single moment I'm with her and she helps me with the bus. She loves working the bus. There's pictures of her, you know, on the bus and, and she loves it too. So I'm glad I get to, you know, this is a, this is a family business. And, um, and when we're not working the bus, we're, we're, you know, we're at the zoo, we're, um, visiting family, we're walking our dogs, um, we're having dinner together. So, uh, it's just a normal life. Well, what an awesome role model, because like, I feel like when she goes to college, she'll be just like smarter than the other girls because she will know what it is to run a business. Like most college kids don't know. They don't know about a budget and dealing with customers and dealing with people. There are just so many things that you kind of learn being around, you know, yeah. a business and helping with a business. So that's. And that's having a good great. work ethic. Yes. Yeah. 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 She, she does know a lot about budget and about sales and about marketing and, and, um, you know, because she's been around it. And I mean, we, like I said, we opened up this business over five years ago. And so she was in middle school and now she's graduating from high school. So she's learned not, she does very well in her economics class. <laughs> so, um, and you more, can apply that to in, yeah, any industry, you any know, those industry. skills. Right. And yeah. I, what I do, I have, um, I have a book, you talk about the books that I read and I read this book and I make every employee read it. It's called the retail Bible. And every employee that comes to work for me, I, I encourage them to read it. Like I tell them, if there's not a customer in here, read this book, because even if you're never going to go into retail, it will help you in any job you have. And so that is a book I, I recommend. Um, it's called the retail Bible. And I think I got it on Amazon online. Mm, we'll definitely yeah. include that in the show notes. I'm like a business book junkie too. Oh and my like, God. You yes. po- Like it could be blogs, podcasts. Yeah. Like if it's about business, like I'm like, Ooh, I know. <laughs> I mean, that that's my whole library. I'm not even kidding you. My, my friends think I'm crazy. Like they think <laughs> I'm weird because I, you know, I don't want to read about, like I said, Harry Potter or, or whatever I'm reading business, but that's my passion, you know, and, and I love it. So <laughs> Don't worry, Astro calls me weird all the time. Does she? <laughs> but that's okay because I don't have to read anything. I can just she wait. You, she, right? I can wait till she reads it, and then she can tell me all about it. Oh my god, you sound just, you sound just like some of the people I know because I'm like, oh my god, you guys, I just read this book. Oh, and I also read the Starbucks way. You got to read that book too, because um, that's a very good model for a company, um, the Starbucks way. So after I read that book, I was calling my mom, like, oh my god, mom. You you need to do this and you need to do that because she owns a bakery, and um, and so that that's a great book too. But yes, I I hear you because my mom's like, I don't need to read that. You just told me the whole dang book, <laughs> right? Like I'm good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we'll make sure to definitely include like links to both of those books in the show notes. They sound interesting, so I'm definitely yeah. going to pick it up on the the Kindle app. Ooh. And are you Android or iPhone? And what's your favorite app? Okay, I'm iPhone, and of course, my favorite app is Suburban Girl. Oh, I mean, yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one that I'm I'm obsessed with is H A R, which um. 
it's it's homes that are for sale in the area because that that's what I did for 20 years. And I'm just obsessed with looking at all the new homes for sale. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you kind of get to see like people's style and what they yeah. are going for. So, yeah. So you still kind of have that love for it, love for Oh, yeah, I always will. I mean, yeah, I always will. And, of course, you know, I love Pinterest. I mean, I love Pinterest also. So that's one of my other favorite apps. Yeah, Pinterest is I'm, dangerous. I'm on Pinterest a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's an obsession. I'm with you there. <laughs> it is an obsession. <laughs> now, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? I would franchise my business. That's what I would do. Yeah. And then would you have it like just kind of all over the U.S.? Yes. Just everywhere. No, that's amazing. Hey, I feel like you're kind of, you're almost there. You got the truck, you got the, mm-hmm. you know, brick and mortar. So, you know, you never know. That, that, awesome. That's actually a dream of mine is to be able to franchise it. Um, but you need a lot of money behind you to do that. And, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But that's what I would do for sure. Hey, you never know. Someone might be listening to this and be like, man, they might be uh, someone who was willing to like invest or something and thinks, you know, your store is a great idea and you just, you never know what might happen. Never know. That would be amazing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, where can the listeners find you? And do you have, uh, if you have any events uh, coming up too, you could definitely plug them. Uh, Instagram and Facebook is Suburban Girl Gifts and stuff. And yeah, we'd love to have new followers. So come check out all of our, where we're going and all of our new arrivals. We'd love to help you out. Perfect. Well, thank you, Melissa, for coming on. We really appreciate it. You've dropped a lot of knowledge bombs and forced people to step up their game with the app. (laughs) So, (laughs) So thank you again. I'm glad we finally got to connect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm very thankful for this opportunity. And I love you guys. Y'all are awesome. Always promoting us. Love y'all. Thanks. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Another great episode. Estrell always gets on me because I feel like after every episode, I'm just like, wow. And whoa, but I can't help it. These people, you know, we like really kind of handpick every guest that we have on here to try to make sure that it's the right guest. You know, you know, people have also kind of volunteered to like, you know, be on the show, but we always try to make sure that the people that we pick to come on to the shows will give you guys the best value and you guys hear these inspirational stories. So at the end of every episode, I have like my wow face on because I'm just so like, geek because I listen I learned something from every episode. You're a nerd. I am a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. She gave us these amazing books and I am a, a business book person. She we talked a little bit about like the marketing with social media and the importance of email lists. And then she even we didn't even get to get into this. So maybe we should have her on at a later date if possible, or one of her partners. But, you know, she talked even about having like this collective, like these, the group of uh, trucks in, excuse me, mobile boutiques in Texas that all get together so they can help each other, like get business. And if you don't have one in your area, you should start one because there are like these different types of collectives in different areas in the U S and man, you, you know, you're definitely stronger in numbers, you know? And so we didn't even really get to dive into that, but just the idea of that right there is amazing. Yeah. And it's uh, what I find interesting is how driven she is. She knows how to multitask very well. You know, she's juggling the brick and mortar, the mobile boutique, spending time with her family, you know, personal time. And then she also has her own jewelry business as well. So I think it's just, you know, really amazing that she has found time to to do all of this and still, you know, be able to explore her creative outlets. 
we try to have people on that have kind of uh, different kind of levels of experience from someone who just started up a month ago to now, for example. And we've had someone on before, too, that have years of experience. I think it really helps put things in perspective for people. Um, Because even like, uh, for example, we have a past a past episode with Lynn and uh, I forgot. Do you remember what episode that was? I don't remember the number, but that was urban Pearl, right? Yes. But she gave us the good, the bad and the ugly of the mobile retail business. And you know what? I actually, you know, had a conversation with someone about that particular episode. And, you know, they mentioned how discouraged they got from hearing, you know, the bad stuff that is, you know, that goes with the business. But in in, in addition to how much she spent on her, her truck. But, you know, I had to tell them, I'm like, but it's, good to hear the bad because that way you know what you're getting into. You're not just going in blind. You know, you don't have to, everybody doesn't have to spend upwards of 30K on their truck. You know, it's all about your personal budget, you know, what you can afford, what you want and and how you want to execute it. So it, it's, it's just good to know what you're getting into. And I think that that episode with Urban Pearl is a good one to check out. Yeah, and that episode is episode 23. And then uh, La Fashion Truck also did like an episode kind of really telling the nitty gritty of like the business and getting started, which is episode 19. But Melissa, I think, did a great job of just kind of talking about like her businesses and um, just making it clear like, hey, it's not going to be like easy peasy. But if you put that work into it, that you know, you'll reap the benefits later. Yeah. So if if anybody is giving you all of the sunshine and lollipop side of any business, they're lying to you. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> they're setting you up to fail. Yeah. Um, so just always be prepared to put in that hard work. And when you do do that, five years, brick and mortar, that's great. She's like past that hump. And you know, the the fact that the, her mobile boutique that she started, you know, three, I believe three years after she started the brick and mortar, like that's helping to bring in more business. So she's just like continuing to grow, which is uh, really amazing. So, you know, we hope that you guys got a lot out of this episode. Um, if, if you ever have any questions for us or suggestions on future episodes or anything that you would like us to address, Feel free to leave us a voice recorded message on our startafashiontruck.com website. We will definitely try our best to answer any questions and we will play the recording on our on the next upcoming episode and answer the questions then. Yeah. And it's uh, when you go to startafashiontruck.com, just go to the podcast page. And uh, please follow us on social media. And as Estro mentioned earlier in the episode, you know, definitely even after you follow us, like sign up for notifications too. Right <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> so just so you know where it is, like if you go to just any random um, page, there is a like button. And then next to the like button is like this little arrow with a drop down. All you have to do is click get notifications. That way, anytime that business page posts something, you'll get an alert instead mm-hmm. of like just maybe seeing their post and maybe not. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to miss a episode of the Can I Park Here podcast on that same page where you can leave a voicemail on the podcast page, um, there's a big don't miss out subscribe um, here. So you can sign up to get notified um, for like when a podcast comes out and then you can even go in settings and click that you're like a fan of mobile boutiques. And then when we send out our newsletter, you could get that too. So uh, we'll include a link to that in the show notes. So if you want to change your life for the better. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That was like really dramatic. I know. Right. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to live, like uh, the best life possible, then just go ahead and sign up. 
Yeah. It'll be awesome. <laughs> if you want to be inspired by these amazing men and women that we've been oh. able to bring to you, like definitely sign up. But you can uh, find us everywhere. Remember, check us out on IG at FFT underscore official underscore. And also, I would tell the listeners out there, like, even if you don't own um, a fashion truck, take a picture next to your favorite fashion truck and then tag us in that picture so we could check you out. Um, and you can tag us on Instagram. You can tag us on Twitter. We love, or Facebook. We'd love to kind of see you next to your favorite truck. Or if you're a truck owner, you know, definitely tag us so we could give you a shout out and say a little hello. And then on Pinterest and Facebook, remember you could just type in find a fashion truck and we will pop right up. So, um, if you got some free time on your hands, don't forget to go to iTunes, leave us a review. And rate us. <laughs> and you'll get like $5 in the mail. Oh, my God. No, you of won't. Mon- <laughs> Monopoly money. <laughs> I'm like, don't even start trying to get us sued. The $5 will be coming out of Nishay's pocket. <laughs> that is the negative, people. <laughs> You're going to be like, Estrell, why do I have so much money missing? You promised these people five bucks. <laughs> no, no five bucks. <laughs> I got to Hey, we just talked about money in this podcast. And <laughs> I'll mention that too. You know, I know you guys are ready to go. But seriously, like anytime I'm ready to do something, it's like, you know, um, check out the finance bar episode too. And she talks about money. So you could go to startafashiontruck.com and just type in finance and her episode will come right up. But literally, like, if you really, really want to do something and you have a dream, it takes capital to do whatever you want to do. Sometimes a little bit of capital, sometimes a lot. And what I do whenever I really want to accomplish something, I do, I mean, it sounds weird, but I live like I'm poor and I have no money. And I haven't being seen that this in years from you. Okay, so folks, she, she says it's I don't years know what your idea of living for I is. was literally like had no money, had to work three jobs at one point in my life to like just maintain. So I know how it is to like really not have any money. But yes, Astral, what I do is I just don't go shopping and I you know, cut down on the niceties. I'll, you know, cut down the plan on my cell phone or I'll cut down the cable plan. Or I look at kind of what I'm spending on a monthly basis and then try to figure out like where I can cut and then where I can save more. And then I just dump all that money into my savings account. So, okay, let me tell you what goofy stuff she did. So now mind you, we're business partners. So we need to talk to each other. Like, Almost every day. So she like cut down her cell phone plan. So one time I needed to talk to her and she's like, I don't have any minutes. I can't talk to you. (laughs) No, like people, the hustle is real. Okay. (laughs) If I need to save money, I, I, I'm not even at the point anymore where I have to work three jobs. Like I make a decent living, but I will tell you if I'm like, I want to save some money because I want to do something big, be it a business idea or something for my house. Oh, those minutes are going to get cut. I'm going to go down. Like right now I'm down to like, I only have 200 text messages a month. So if you're not really on iMessage, I'm not trying to talk to you via text message. That's real <laughs> sad. <laughs> but I, I'm so frugal. <laughs> like it's kind of bad. But folks, if you're serious about your dream and if you're serious about accomplishing whatever it is, you have to do what's necessary. If it's cutting down or... Or if it's um, working extra jobs, like for two years, I was actually a professor at a college. Like, um, so, you know, the hustle is real and you're talking to a real hustler right here. That's all I'll say. <laughs> this, is, this outro is super long now. <laughs> it's always super long, Michelle, with you. Oh, you chatty Kathy. Chatty In- <laughs> Anywho, um, you know, check us out, follow us, rate us, sign up for our email list, give us some love. We love to hear from you. Tag us, be active, send us ideas for people to interview. Um, Yeah. Keep in touch. Love you guys. 
Bye. Thanks for parking here.